This is the hot mic on NewsX. I'm Megha Sharma and we are in the midst of the election season in our country. The election commission has already announced the election schedule. We are talking about how the Congress has been attacking the BJP, whether it is about the electoral bonds or we talk about the election commission dates that have been announced. We've also spoken about on length corruption issues. We've spoken at length in terms of the Congress leaders who have come out and spoken about how Indi Alliance needs to come together. It in fact has come together and they have challenged BJP, they've challenged NDA to then not form the government. Joining me on the telecast right now is the Congress senior leader, Mr. Vivek Tanka. He's also the senior advocate in the Supreme Court and he is the member of the parliament from the Rajya Sabha. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Tanka, you, thank you. for joining thank me you, on the telecast. And my first question, of course, the election commission announcing the dates, but the charge that has come out from the Congress's side is that uh, election commission has put out the dates in line with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's campaign. How much truth do you see in the allegation that has been put? We've always believed that uh, the present government has huge influence on the working of these bodies, especially Election Commission. For no other reason that uh, Home Ministry comes into picture in these cases. And it's very easy for Home Ministry to put its constraints to ensure a spaced out election. Mm -hmm. Because uh, for many, many uh, reasons, BJP would always want a longer elections. It's more expensive and only they have the money. No other parties would be short of finances then they can organize themselves better in smaller spaces. And thirdly, their campaigning becomes more effective because they are able to reach, their top leadership is able to reach all places uh, in these uh, seven, eight uh, uh, spaces that they create for these elections. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, you talk of one nation, one election, this is, uh, and then you can't even hold one election, one election in, in one month. I mean, it's stretching it up to the month of June, 4th of June, starting from May, March up to June. And you talk of one nation, one election. So all these gimmicks or these mythical uh, one-liners, which we keep hearing, mm. is, is a huge farce on this country. The fact is we have to save our democracy. Okay. The question is whether we will have the next election in a democratic format or not. not. That's the question which is, uh, in, in fact, uh, troubling all of us. Okay. You know, uh, when the election commissioner issue was raised, the election commissioner quit and there have been two election commissioners that have been appointed. Obviously, Congress took umbrage to it. They said that there is uh, some sort of a controversy in that as well. So now, how uh, trustful are you of the election commission of our country? We have no reason not to trust them because uh, they're very they they all respected people and they should also know that the duty that they're performing is for the republic of india it's not for any political party political parties will come and go political leaders will come and go but india as a nation has to live and it's the duty and 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 and, and uh, the, the responsibility of the election commission to ensure that India remains a democratic republic. Okay. You know, now the Lok Sabha elections are happening in just a few weeks' time. Uh, there is every single time the elections are held, the issue of EVM also is brought on the fore. Uh, are you saying, is the India Alliance saying, is Congress and the opposition saying that EVMs are not the fair way of holding elections? If it is the BJP that ends up winning the election. Are you then going to accuse the BJP of compromising the election process, the EVM process that is carried by the election commission? Uh, let, me, let me put it in different words. Today, EVM is not the recognized method of holding elections world over. All nations which matter, where democracy matters, have, have decided not to use EVM. Now, why India is insisting is something which is something special to the government and to the election commission. But the fact is that the world over, EVM is not the preferred choice of holding election. Number two, 
when we look at this election schedule schedules we find that places where bjp doesn't have a chance you will have elections in that state in one day where bjp is in a fight and is desperate to win seats mm. they will have them in five six phases okay it be madhya pradesh it be rajasthan it be uttar pradesh you see now maharashtra where it's going to matter to bjp these are also big states you big, know uttar yes. pradesh with 80 seats you have maharashtra with 48 you have bihar which is a huge state what about tamil nadu is it a small state it's a big state yes and so many southern states where you have uh, done it in, you are doing it in one day mm -hmm. so we find that there is there seems to be uh, some reason for all of us to suspect that this whole management of spacing out election is done with a view to benefit bjp that's how we feel uh, as i said elections are based upon trust and confidence okay. uh, it's not necessary that we may be feeling what we feel is correct also at times but the point is uh, it's even if some people feel distrustful the, it's the duty of the government and the election commission to ensure that distrust is also not carried forward because okay. then then if you if you hold elections and people feel it's not been a fair election then then it is at the end of the day it's it's the it's the republic of bharat which will suffer okay i'm moving on to the next controversy that has been created this is about the electoral bonds and the data that has been relieved revealed by the election commission now uh, the congress has put forth its point and made an allegation that a number of these firms a number of these corporates have allegedly given money to bjp in exchange for certain quid pro quo or there may have been allegedly some action that would that may have been taken by the bjp at the behest of the enforcement directorate the other investigative agencies uh, how much truth is there to it uh, can such charges be made without any proof the election commission has still not come out and released the the data that is then going to align which corporate has given how much funds to which political party the whole conduct of state bank of india and then through election commission this declaration has to come has been in inverted commas not satisfactory they have even not respected the word and the dictat of supreme court they were given timelines to finish their job and what was supreme court directing them to do bring transparency in what has been received and to whom it has gone why is this inertia to disclose this and i am surprised state bank of india is a public sector undertaking it's not it's not an entity belonging to bjp it's not it beholden to bjp for anything why should the state bank of india take up the cause of the ruling party and give a false affidavit to the supreme court that this small little it task which can be done in one or two days cannot happen in 3 months so okay. it's 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 shocking that entities are bending so much to benefit the interest of the ruling party now i know for sure this is one of the biggest scams of this century this this the this uh, the bond issue from whom it is collected how it is collected what were the pressures before and after and at this at at, at this stage of course you can't say with 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 uh, you're not charge sheeting a person you're only looking at the situation as it had happened okay and i'm so the suspicion the situation is so suspicious and so faulty and so bad believe me if this had happened in any other country in the world the government would have had to resign okay i think none of the countries across the globe have a system where they reveal the donations that come from corporates or individuals or organizations in fact the united states of america they are going to be holding the elections and they have no such declaration or rule or law that allows for donations to be made public similarly when we talk about how the process of donations before electoral bonds came into being was also non transparent 
we have seen in electoral bonds there are, there is this data that is collected it has come out in public domain after the supreme court made this ruling asked the sbi to come up with these disclosures are there political parties in our country willing to work in favor of the citizens of our country and not looking at vested interests now whether it is the congress or the bjp or any political party i i am skeptical and the public of our country is skeptical in the intention of the political party to come out and reveal this information we have nothing to hide at no i can tell you congress has nothing to hide on the contrary all all, all our accounts uh, are under a sort some sort of a forced uh, lien you know 135 crores in a pending appeal is due for us due upon us to pay to the department appeal is still pending in itat right. we are asking for a stay which is normally given to most ssc okay. but in the national congress is an ssc who can't who can't who which is not uh, in a position to get stay orders in this country today number 2 the best part is what they have to take from us is 135 crores and they've placed a lien we lien means then i can't touch that money in my account on nearly 260 or 270 crores so are you wanting to make sure that the congress party has no money to fight the election so bjp will the only party with lots of money to fight the election space out the election organize organize it well it's an evm based election so everything is at your command what is happening in this country okay and let me tell you in america of course pub, uh, companies fund but that funding is very transparent every 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 uh, iota of that funding is 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 declared in uh, through public declarations in, in in before the respective departments there is no country in the world which which practiced or had a law like we had about anonymity in funding we made a law to protect people who were funding pro, uh, the uh, the parties through electoral bonds and we also realized very soon that 90% or 70% of it was only going to the ruling party mm. so this was a one sided scheme for the benefit of the ruling party brought by the ruling party anonymity was a key word for this scheme and even to break this anonymity the supreme court is facing so so much of resistance okay. then you can realize who is guilty and who is not guilty you know there are uh, two counter responses that are given by the bjp they speak about how they are the majority ruling party in several parts of the country several states in the country and therefore the proportion of the funding that they receive is going to be larger uh, the other contention that has been put is because the people the individuals the organizations have more trust in the bjp to form government to create rules to bring about laws and policies is the reason they are bending towards the bjp to fund them versus the congress which is now at number 3 position our problem is not because bjp has more governments so it should naturally receive more money our problem is the people who are giving you money our people who are being visited by ad and cbi a week a week before or two weeks before who are facing huge charges who have in the next days or next week or next month they have huge contracts which are to be given to them now the kind of uh, statistics and uh, details that have, that have come out about with different companies i mean company which has uh, a total valuation of 300 crores mm -hmm. makes makes a donation of uh, say 600 crores now we, all this needs to be found, investigated found out i mean uh, i believe there's there's a company in, in madhya pradesh which which has given a huge donation and that before that huge donation they got a after that huge donation or before that huge donation they got a huge contract mm. and, and 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 what what is being given as a donation is 60 70% of that contract value so all this is very just it may be true it may not be true okay i'm not saying that everything that we think is correct what i'm trying to say there's too much of suspicion too much of finger pointing which is happening on the people who have given donations 
it 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 has started looking like a scam the biggest scam of this century at least where 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 uh, people who are tainted or people who are wanting favors from government have used this law of anonymity to give donations and that is why rightly supreme court saw that it was such a non transparent law that it had to strike it down okay moving on to citizenship amendment act and you have raised a number of issues about it talking about how this is not the right time to come out with this implementation you've also spoken about how this is uh, allegedly unfair to the muslim population of our country uh, are you not in support of the victims who travel to pakistan or lived in pakistan and they are from the minority community and they have been mistreated they have been persecuted and we have all statistics all numbers in place where their populations have deteriorated fallen to alarming levels in bangladesh in afghanistan particularly in pakistan mega let me tell you i don't look at such uh, laws or such uh, efforts to protect people who have suffered or who 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 have uh, been in 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 countries which were hostile so i am all my heart is for them people who suffer but my heart is also for 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 a law which doesn't which helps everybody who is suffering why do you distinct, discriminate on the grounds of caste or communities you don't need not say that tell me in in pakistan or afghanistan on the ground of religion why would a muslim be persecuted it's only hindu or uh, other communities who will be persecuted so you don't have to even mention that name mm. your your law should have been whoever has been persecuted we will consider his citizenship application on the basis of this law what is this law it creates two conditions there's a cut off date that up to 14, 2014 yes if you have come before 2014 you're entitled to make an application otherwise it was a longer period yeah. it used to be 11 years or something number 2 it says it it will be presumed that you have been uh, you have been a victim of persecution mm. these are the two things what i'm trying to say that if you only made a law which would look very sensible and the world would have respected you for that that anybody who's persecuted whether it be from any country and we are going to protect him and give him respect and dignity the world would have saluted you and bjp but for bjp this was not to protect just people who are persecuted for bjp it was an election uh, propaganda this so law came issues about this, we talk about this law came four years back yeah they didn't implement they didn't think of implementing it till february march because elections are going to start now So okay, for, that may be a reason for the BJP to implement to notify this particular law, the rules of the law. But also keeping in mind that immigration has been an issue that countries across the globe have been fighting. Uh, but we, when we also talk about how the minority community, we we take in the names of these six communities, including Hindus and Sikhs. Uh, this this has been particularly the focal area of all these three countries. when it comes to the when it comes to the muslims in all these three countries who are islamic which are islamic Islam. nations it it comes across as a as an ethnic clash which has suppose they are the shias and the sunnis suppose they are the ahmadiyas suppose they are the pashtuns now these are ethnic clashes and uh, the country of india is open to even invite them and get them citizenship over here the process that has been shortened is for the minorities and this is particularly during the time of partition that these individuals decided to stay back in these countries but have not been treated the way they should have been and and therefore that's that's the premise of this law i mean do you find anything uh, unpalatable about it i'm i'm very clear on one thing these humanitarian laws are not made on the basis of caste or religion they are made made on the basis of persecution tell me if the tamils of uh, sri lanka if they were facing persecution in sri lanka have you cared for them have you decided to give them any any such relief because that doesn't suit you that's not a hindu muslim uh, issue 
or any other place where Indians have been persecuted. You know, you recollect how from Africa, Indians were thrown out uh, 30 years back mm. and a whole lot of Indians had to go to England and the whole of Europe. And of course, many of them came back to India. Weren't they given refuge? Mm. Did England say at that time that the Indians cannot come and uh, uh, settle in, in, uh, in UK? So what I'm trying to say is refuge, citizenship, when you give to such people, of course, you should protect them. People who deserve, who have been persecuted, need to be protected, even if they belong to the minority community, especially in it. But my point is, the way you have prepared this law, the way you want to implement this law, and, the, and, and, and your, all your announcements don't match with the kind of law you're making. Your law is not to protect them or to, to, to humanize their existence. Your law is to create a new World Bank. Create, okay. To create, create a new story for your election campaign. Now, okay. this is where I, 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 I don't agree. I no, feel, fair. of course, everybody needs to be protected. Minority needs to be protected also. But minorities everywhere else also. Okay, fair enough. Uh, moving on to Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Joro Nyaya Yatra. It culminates today in Mumbai. Uh, does India Alliance and particularly Congress see Rahul Gandhi as the Prime Minister of our country sometime in the future? Nobody has said that. I didn't hear that at no, all. No, I'm asking you. No, no we, we don't uh, talk of these things so flippantly because uh, it's a serious issue. Uh, first of all, we have to fight an election. Secondly, we have to win that election. Once we win that election, then the political parties which come with their respective numbers will take a call who should be the Prime Minister, who should not be the Prime Minister. Uh, this is... We, we are not trying to create a, a situation where we want it to be, the whole election should be a, a BJP versus Congress. It's, the election is not just BJP versus Congress. It's, the election is BJP versus the rest. Mm. It's the re India Alliance is the rest. Mm. So the rest will decide at the appropriate time who, want, who should be the Prime Minister. There have been conflicts that have been seen within India Alliance as well. Whether we talk about uh, the seat sharing pact that could not be forged between Aam Admi Party and the Congress in Punjab. Uh, there have been problems that have arisen between the TMC and Congress in, in West Bengal. There have been problems that have been, and, and obviously when we talk about Congress and the left in Kerala, they have been, uh, they, they have been on, on conflicting grounds. They have always been uh, contesting each other. Do you think these could be the issues uh, which could be the thorny points for the India Alliance to be able to stand united against NDA. Mega, it's a very interesting situation. We have Congress and we have regional parties. Congress is strong in some states. Regional parties are strong in other states. Some, there is some element of overlapping also, like in Punjab. Congress, Aam Admi Party has stepped into the shoes of Congress as a ruling party. But Congress, nevertheless, is still the largest opposition party. In Kerala, traditionally, BJP is, is a non-entity. It's the communist and the Congress who contest the election. A diff, another scenario happens to prevail in Tamil Nadu. So what I'm trying to say is, at the end of the day, when you calculate your votes, the consolidation of anti-BJP votes is going to help the formation of a new government. And that consolidation is more than 50%. If that 50% comes together in this election, that is the reason why we feel that there could be an alternative government. Uh, if, if that was not correct, if what I'm saying is wrong, then BJP would not have been so worried about breaking parties breaking chief ministers, winning over our people. Even today, in the, in the last Rajya Sabha elections in Maharashtra, all four people who got Rajya Sabha seats are people who had a Congress background, old Congress background. What about their own people? So BJP is in a very desperate condition. I was coming to that question, but, but don't you think there are some lacunae within the Congress that your leaders, big and small, are leaving the Congress and joining the BJP or Shiv Sena? I, I, I'll answer it in another way. There are 
when you are a political party or an organization or you're a channel you're a, uh, you're a, a company there are ups and downs in your life and phases it happens with everybody we've ruled this country for 60 years as a democratic party largest democratic formation today we are fighting for our existence of course we are fighting and we'll keep fighting because i know at the end of the tunnel there will be a light again so we know that there is a light mm. but we have to keep fighting for to reach that light so when you're talking about india alliance or the rest that is going to be fighting the bjp in the elections so it uh, you're saying it doesn't matter if the congress gets the votes gets the seats till the time uh, the coalition of the opposition ends up defeating the bjp it doesn't matter if the congress's performance worsens as compared to 2019 or 2014 No, I can't say that. They are also dependent upon us doing better. Well, because if you see the Hindi heartland, I, mean, I see Madhya Pradesh, you see Rajasthan, you see Uttar Pradesh, if you see Chhattisgarh, these are places where there are a large number of seats, and BJP in all these states states is at its optimum. Like in Madhya Pradesh. Out of twenty-nine, they have twenty-eight seats. Mm. In Ut in Chhattisgarh, I I remember they have nine out of eleven. Rajasthan, I think they had all the seats, if yeah. I'm not wrong. Yes. Uttar Pradesh, they had virtually ninety percent of the seats. I think ten or seats went to BSP or something. Yes. So, BJP has to work very hard mm. to maintain its tally, mm. and that is why a spaced-out election in all these places. they want okay. they have to fight hard so then to, to if, keep to, yeah, to keep the tally big, on it's a big challenge for the bjp i agree uh, so even if so even if the nda was able to defeat india lands but could not achieve its 400 crossing 400 target would it also be one of the rhetoric that will be played out by the opposition that they promised as much but they could not i don't oh. i don't think uh, 400 is, is a figure which they themselves believe that that's that, that that's a war cry you know you have a battle cry every regiment has a battle cry so bjp is given a war cry for the election they don't believe that it can they can achieve 400 they themselves know that uh, this election is a tough election where they have to hold on to what they had got last time and holding on is always in a democracy on it's never simple and they have to and then they need to gain where they they are, it is very difficult for them to gain hmm. like south india i don't see much gains for bjp so it's as i said from where this figure of 400 is coming i don't know but uh, as i said all parties will do their best election is the festival of democracy my only main is that bjp as a party has never allow, has not allowing elections to be level to be played on a level playing field okay. congress never 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 stopped their funding congress never troubled them through income tax uh, uh, department congress never started investigations against bjp in the way they do it all the time now mm. not only congress they do it against all opposition parties and op- opposition leaders if bj one bjp wants to be a national party it needs to mature up okay it needs it it needs to have a a, 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 a bigger heart to deal with the opposition because if you don't know how to deal with your opposition you never be a sec- you can never be a successful democracy okay so then uh, when the opposition is going to come out in the battlefield and fight the elections with the nda uh, what according to you would be an achievable respectable number to win the seats i can't i don't get into these uh, figures at all i know the 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 rubicon is 272 seats whichever party gets 272 seats can form the government so uh, as far as i'm concerned uh, i would like the opposition alliance to cross that number of 272 okay uh talking about uh, Mr Malikarjun Kharge he had uh, just a few days ago made a statement he had said that he is in doubt of fighting the elections 
this time around uh, from Kalburgi because of his age. He's 83 years old. Uh, do you feel uh, that political parties across all party lines need to have a cap on the on the age for active years of pursuing politics? But I don't know whether Mr. Modi will agree to that because uh, he will be the first casualty if such a cap is brought ever. Because he's now... The BJP already has this Marg Mangdal that no, has but, been but created. As I, said, I said, it's the current leadership which will be the first victim or sufferer of any such cap. But in my opinion, it's very, very difficult to bring a cap in, in political life. Hmm. If uh, America couldn't bring a cap, Joe Biden is <laughs> a very old serving president. I mean, the whole... America knows he's old, his reflexes are old, his thought processes are old, hmm. yet they have accepted him as president of the United States of America. And uh, they have no cap. So as I said, uh, bringing an age cap, uh, though a very, uh, uh, it looks a good thought process when you talk about it, but in, uh, doing it in practical terms, is not, it's not easy, it's not practical. Talking about Uttar Pradesh, now uh, the parts to uh, Delhi. <laughs> to Delhi, to the Delhi political it's why, it's scene via. is via Lucknow, is via Uttar Pradesh. That's what we always say. And we talk about Amethi and we talk about Raibareli. Why is still secrecy on the Raibareli and the Amethi seats? Wait for a few days, we'll come to know. The secret will be over. As I said, every, every party has its own policy. Congress will have its own policy, which will be known to everybody in the next few days. So I, I really can't comment on these, these decisions because I even don't know what is the, going to be the decision on these issues. But do you think uh, the Congress has been has not been able to keep its uh, bastions in control in wake of the results that we had seen in 2019 and 2014 as well in Uttar Pradesh? No, you're talking of in, in Uttar Pradesh. In Uttar Pradesh and particularly Amethi. As I said, in, in, a, in a current scenario, to blame anybody that you have not been able to keep your bas bas bastions safe is unfair. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a fast evolving scenario. Today what looks unsafe becomes safe day after tomorrow. I don't know whether it is safe or unsafe for anybody who's commit, uh, fighting from MAT on a BJP ticket. Elections will tell us what was safe. So let's not... Uh, Count our chickens before the eggs are hatched. Mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, let the elections will give you their own story. And it's after that election you realize that people of India know exactly where to vote and for, to, for, for whom to vote. I asked this question because last time around Rahul Gandhi lost from Amethi. Uh, if Rahul Gandhi does not contest from Amethi this time around, obviously this becomes a major you know, a major ploy for the BJP to then attack the Congress. That uh, I have no idea at all whether he's fighting from which constituency. Hmm. The only constituency which has been announced so far is Vayanand. Yes. They have nothing, they, there's, there's no... And that is also some sort of a controversy that was raked by the CPI because they spoke about how Rahul Gandhi should pick a, pick a fight which is in direct contest to the BJP versus fighting against the CPI. And you have a Raj, D. Raja's wife who at this point of time is being contested, is being fielded from Vayanand. Because they are fighting us, so they'll have to raise a controversy. And it's not unusual for national leaders to fight, fight from two constituencies. I recollect so Indraji fought from two constituencies. I have seen Vajpayee ji fighting from two constituencies. I have seen Modi ji fighting from two constituencies. Not one. I mean, I'm talking of many, many leaders. Mm. So if some, if if Rahul ji fights from two constituencies also, it will not be a surprise for me. Okay. On that note, thank you, Mr. Vivek Tanka, for uh, speaking to us on the hot mic. Uh, and uh, here's wishing you all the best because uh, the election season now officially starts. Mega, we need all your good wishes. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are fighting a grim battle. And to us, this battle is a battle of survival of democracy. Well, may the best party win. On always, that note. always. On it that happens. note, uh, I come to a wrap on the hot mic on NewsX. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.